Hello, this is Liat Rogel, and this is Social Innovation for IS Abroad Milan. Today we speak about new forms of sharing, collaboration and collective action. Remember, we mentioned three points that help us recognize social innovation. We saw together that to recognize social innovation, we need three points. The origin, if it is really a social need, something that has to be solved. The type of organization that should be based on relationships and network. And finally, the outcome. So is it, does it have social benefit, positive benefit to society as a whole? Today we will be speaking about the second point, organization, networking, relationship. Why should we work by networking? How do we do it? When do we do it in the process? And where is collaboration happening? And we will be discussing this by using this article, Working Weekly, published by the Stanford Social Innovation Review. Working weekly allows us to work with more transparency, with greater openness. It allows us to decentralize decision making and also create collective action. So for social change, working weekly is really interesting. People are used to work in network. Social networks themselves are as old as human society. You all have your social networks, your families, your neighborhood, communities of interest. But today we also have um, a new element um, and these are technologies, information and communication technologies. Actually, I'm guessing for you they're part of your life and you're all using some kind of technology to connect with other people and to collaborate with other people. It is so normal today that we don't even think how incredible it is that only a few years ago we couldn't do the same things as we're doing today. And exactly those technologies, information and communication technologies, allow us today not only to think in terms of networking and collaboration, but to really change our mindset and transform our mindset into a networked mindset. And this changes not only us and the way we live, but also organizations and the way we innovate and the way we look at uh, social innovation. There are some reasons for which it is even more useful to use a network approach. And here in this article, uh, we can see five of them. Let's look at each of them together. The five reasons are not exclusive and not necessarily represent everything that you can do by using network approach, but they do divide well the benefits that society can have while operating in a network approach. Let's explore those points together. The first reason to use a network approach is when we want to create strong communities. When we want individuals to come together and strengthen their relationships. Strong relationships will then allow us to work better on the needs of that specific community. And the more the community is strong, the more creative will be the solutions that we will find for those problems. Organizations that are now working in neighborhoods in need are becoming more of community weavers. To understand what community weavers mean, let me tell you about Lawrence Community Work. In this project, people are asked to come to dinners together and those dinners are facilitated by experts that help the community to strengthen and become creative community. The organization has gone through a revolution, transforming it from a traditional organization with two people in the staff to an organization that is built on 5,000 memberships. 
and therefore it saw also benefits, economical benefits to the organization itself and therefore better results on the community and on the neighborhood. The second reason to work in a network approach is when we want to access diverse perspectives. So when my point of view is not enough and I would like to know what other people think or I could use experts from other fields. Let me tell you something about change makers. This is a very special online competition for social innovation ideas. So people are asked to come up with good ideas to interesting problems and then they share them quite quickly in order for other people to add their perspective into the solution. So the solutions that they are proposed are not yet complete and the platform on online allow us to get different perspectives and before we even go in a selection to allow groups and teams uh, to form around those specific problems. The third reason why you should work in a network is when you want to share and build knowledge. So each member of the network brings something, puts brick together in order to build knowledge and to create by that uh, better knowledge, more complete, maybe create common strategies uh, or standards. Um, there are many examples, of course the first that, came to, that comes to mind are Wikipedia or TripAdvisor where people share and build knowledge in one hand on a lot of topics and in the other hand in tourism, where to go to drink to, for a hotel but also in social innovation it is really important to build and share knowledge. One example is the Full Frame initiative. Here organization dealing with education or healthcare connect and share their knowledge about what they are doing. This is very helpful because it allows them not to repeat each other's mistake and of course to learn from one another and not every time go through a long process. When, when they share their knowledge, they are also able to discuss and decide if some of this knowledge can be built into something that they can share on a long term, like a strategy for all the organizations involved. The fourth reason why you should work in a network is when you want to mobilize people, to make people be active, take part, say what they have to say and do something about their own causes. It's really important for people to be part of a movement and to take things sometimes to their own hands. One example is Kaboom, uh, which makes playground for children in poor neighborhoods. Playing is very important and it is useless, Kaboom thought, to think that we have to wait for someone to finance and to sponsor a building of playgrounds in poor neighborhood. Why not allow the community to do it? So here with the facilitation of Kaboom, the community itself arranges everything from fundraising to designing the playground to coming up with ideas how to maintain the, the playground and of course built it with their own hands. Last point why you should work in a network is when you want to coordinate resources and actions. And we do it today with tools that seem so obvious like tags for example. So if all of you were to go in an event in Milan, take pictures and tag it with the same name, then we will find all those pictures together without you really coordinating it. And um, tags helped also some revol small revolutions happen. If we think about Twitter and how it helped people in uh, countries where journalists were not allowed to come in 
to talk about what they were going through and to tell the world what was exactly happening in their own country. This is a small revolution happened by networking and by coordinating resources and actions. And this brings us also to think about the role of institutions today and to think about institutions and, on the other hand, collaborations. Clay Shirky wrote the book Here Comes Everybody, where he talks about collaboration and institutions or how today collaboration and networking actually substitute uh, institutions. Uh, in this uh, in interesting TED talk, he is talking about how you use collaboration and also on some of the challenges that we encounter while operating in a network. Collaboration, as we've seen, is helpful in many ways. Um, now, the question is, when do we operate uh, in, a collaboration, in a collaborative way in the process of social innovation? So, if you remember the process of social innovation, we have uh, a, a route to take and we can decide in which of these points uh, we would like to network, we would like to involve uh, more people. Traditionally, in innovation, the collaboration, networking, uh, talking with people was mostly in the prompts. So when I want to understand the context, when I want to understand the problem, I would involve the user. Uh, maybe by launching a survey, maybe by talking with people, interviews, focus group, all of those are quite traditional uh, in the innovation process and are really very important for understanding where we are standing and what are we talking about. And they are important both for qualitative and quantitative results. Um, but today we see networking and we have the opportunity to network and collaborate also in proposals. So why not think about people, the community, the society, not only as the ones that understand and can talk about their problems, but also as those who can propose proposals, ideas to solve the problems. So we ask people, here is the example of Kaboom that I showed you before where children talk about their own playground and what they would like to have in their neighborhoods. Prototyping are another tool that we have in order to speak with our um, society about those solutions and try them immediately. Why wait to see that the solution is uh, not working after a long time that we've spent developing it. Let's try it together with people. So we make kind of very quick prototyping, sometimes using paper or very quick technologies, and together networking and collaborating, we are modifying the prototype as we go. And we get ready to sustaining our idea and realizing that the idea can really work. And even in the sustaining part that usually was left mostly to expert, we can see users today um, applying uh, their skills, even if they are not expert, to sustaining an idea. I want to give you an example not from the social innovation uh, field, but from uh, the design field, take IKEA. If you want to design your own kitchen today, you don't have to be an expert. You can download a program that allow you very easily to plan your kitchen, understand how it will look like and even how much it costs. On the same way with other programs, we can allow users today to become expert and help us innovate and sustain good ideas. 
Collaboration and networking is great and it is helpful in many phases of social innovation process, but it also has some really big challenges. Some of the challenges are understanding how to manage working with many people and how to manage the stream of information that is coming to us from everybody, from the society. When can we trust this information? And when do we need an expert opinion? On which topics we would like uh, uh, to trust the network and where it is impossible. Also, it's important to think if networking and collaboration allow us in the specific case to get better results than the one that we can have by operating uh, traditionally as an institutions by experts. Um, all those challenges are really important for us to discuss and we will do it together in class. It's interesting to see that specific places are being designed and used for networking and collaborating. In Milan itself, we can notice a boom of co-working spaces. Some of the co-working spaces are specific for people like parents. Take, for example, Piano Chi in Milan. Others are more related to entrepreneurs working on social innovation and solutions for our biggest problems. Others are places where people reinvent the way we produce and really work with their hands with new technologies like 3D printing and laser cutting. Uh, they are called Fab Labs. And in these places people network while working together using their hands. Um, in those places in uh, Milan and all over the world, people have to get used to a new way of working that means sharing what they're doing and opening up to other people. Of course, opening innovation is another big topic that is really important for us because it has a lot to do with collaboration, but it also shows us uh, new ways of thinking how to make progress in society, not by keeping innovation uh, to one company or one person, but by sharing it with uh, the whole community. Open innovation is a very big topic and it's also a discussion going on in the community of social innovation. We are talking about if protecting innovation with intellectual property is actually protecting innovation or maybe it is blocking progress. And this is something we will be discussing in our next lesson. So by now we have seen new forms of collaboration, collective action, we understood why it is important for us to collaborate, when in the social innovation process do we collaborate, where do we collaborate, special places. And in class we will see specific examples of collaboration and we'll also understand how to integrate networking and collaboration with new technology in your projects. See you in class.